Get the cash flow you need with an APP Cash Advance from CCGA. Pay expenses, make upgrades, perform maintenance, and more with interest-free and low-interest financing. Visit ccga.ca. Cash advances are made under the Government of Canada's Advance Payments Program. It's time for Real Ag Radio on Rural Radio Channel 147 on Sirius XM. Radio and RealEgCulture.com is your home for insight and analysis of the issues that are impacting your farm business. Let's get real and get connected with Real Ag Radio. Welcome to Real Ag Radio here on Rural Radio 147 at Sirius XM. Sean Haney, your host for today's show. We got a special treat. Yes. It is, it's actually Saturday night. It is Saturday night in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We are at the uh, the game here between the Saskatoon Berries, the local team, and they're playing the Okotoks Dogs. Yes, and it's a great matchup. And uh, we're here for the 2024 Invigor Series. This is Game 3, the final game of our series. We, we've been to Winnipeg, we've been to Edmonton, and now we're catching some WCBL action. Great opportunity. If you have not been to a WCB, WCBL game, you, you need to check it out. It is great college talent. Wood, it's wood bat. And it is a great evening out in the season. That we're, they're getting closer to the playoffs. So if you've uh, if you've got a, a, a team near you and you're in Alberta or Saskatchewan, I uh, encourage you to to check out the action. So like I said, we're here with BSF and Invigor Hybrid Canola for the Invigor Series. And we're going to hear from Katrina Roberts. She's a plant breeder with BSF. They've got three new hybrids. We heard about last or earlier this week, which will be last week when you're hearing this on Monday. But uh, we're going to hear all about them. And they're, they're, they're the earlies. Right, they've, and they they have a fit in Western Canada and as well in the northern tier of the U.S. If you are growing spring canola in the U.S., so please, uh, you're gonna want to pay attention to Katrina. We got Glenn Forster. He's a regional sales manager with BSF. He's gonna talk about some of the community involvement that BSF is engaged in 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 rural parts of the country. And then we've got a farmer panel. Yes, Josh Laid and Matt Ends, both farm in Saskatchewan. They're gonna join us here today. Uh, for the farmer panel. Now, if you have any feedback, you can send me an email, shaney at realagriculture.com. You can also find Real Agriculture across all the different social media platforms. You're more than welcome to call the Real Ag Feedback Line, 855-776-6147. Let's get to it. We're going to take a break. When we come back, we're going to watch some of the, com- the baseball action during the commercial break because they just got the game started. And then when we come back, we've got Katrina. She is a plant breeder with BSF. She'll join us right after this. We are joined right now by the Canadian consultant for Helena, Patrick Langell. Helena is a leading company that delivers formulation technology into the egg industry across the U.S., and a number of those work excellently up here in Canada. Why do you get excited about research? Probably 50 years there's been data out there that has proven that good human product can have an excellent return on investment. Research delivers that to almost anybody who grows a crop and adds it into their fertilizer blend the year of application. All across Canada, Canada, we have these different types of soils and fits into almost any different application you can come across. And if we can increase the amount of nutrients, then you just have a much higher quality product that you're able to grow that season. Yeah. These biostimulants can be used to take your nutrient use efficiency, adding in the right biostimulants such as research, can bump that from 40 to 60, perhaps up to 50 to 80, making that investment much more valuable. So you can find out more by going to HelenaAgra.com. The Pulse School on realagriculture.com has everything you need to get your crop off to a great start and a strong finish. Whether you're growing chickpeas, faba beans, lentils, or peas, you'll get all the latest and best agronomic information at pulseschool.com. A library of top-notch agronomy videos from industry experts available on demand at your fingertips. Visit The Pulse School, brought to you by BASF on realagriculture.com.
And welcome back to Real Ag Radio. We're here with Invigor Hybrid Canola from BSF Canada Agricultural Solutions for Game 3 of the 2024 Invigor Series in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, where the Saskatoon Berries are facing the Okotoks Dogs. It's a big matchup. We'll be talking to the Invigor team here today, local BSF representatives, and a panel of farmers. We're going to drag them away from the baseball game that is underway, that is right now in the top of the first inning. And, uh, ouch. It is, or if we're in the bottom of the first, it's 4 nothing bad guys. So Okotoks is up early in the game here. So we're trying to do the show here on the Saturday night, prime time, and um, trying to watch some baseball. <laughs> so, uh, hey, up first, this is pretty cool. I'm looking forward to this discussion. We are joined right now by Katrina Roberts, and she is a plant breeder with BSF Canada. Katrina, it is great to meet you. Yeah, it's awesome to be here. Yeah, so uh, have, you, you, have you been to a Barry's game before? I have not. This is my first time. Well, there you go. There's, and you live here. <laughs> I do. This, yep. Well, that's good. I'm, I'm glad that uh, this work, work event, in yes. air quotes, has drug you out to, to this. So, that's hey, right. t- tell us about your, uh, you, you, what you, your career and uh, what you do at BSF as a plant breeder. Yeah, so um, I guess I've been with BSF now for 15 years. Um, I have kind of moved through a few different roles with the company, started out as a breeding agronomist, um, then moved into an assistant breeder, and now one of the the few plant breeders that we have at the site, um, just outside of Saskatoon. Um, I'm responsible for inbred development and hybrid production. Oh, and so was canola always your uh, plant of choice? So it has been actually all my career. So um, whether it started out to be that way, that's how it's ended. So, Okay. And, and what, as a plant breeder, um, what, what interests you the most? What, what is so intriguing about the canola plant is you're trying to boost characteristics. Of, of course, yield, but disease. And like just what, what's cool about the canola plant that maybe the... the commercial farmer isn't totally aware of right yeah so i would say like canola in general is such a plastic plant like just the ability that it it can grow in many different um regions across um different environments um just even the amount of stress that it can handle um just even the the variety of traits and stuff, just even over the last multiple years, um, being in the field, um, just seeing um, all, just how things have emerged or um, evolved, I guess, um, with just the disease and obviously yield. Um, yeah, like, again, just the plant in itself is, it can handle a lot. And I, I think that's what's really exciting. Well, you're, you're really the beginning, the start of the hybrids that farmers get to enjoy and grow and, and profit from. And there's three new hybrids for 2025, the upcoming season. We've got to get the 24 crop in the bin. I realize right. that. But we've got to start to think about 25. Yeah. Um, what did the path look like to, to, to develop those three hybrids? Yeah, so the path itself in general can be actually quite a long process, um, kind of from inception to when it's actually available. Um, So a lot of times it's, it starts with just having that conversation, having a conversation with the customers to understand their needs at the time. But it's also kind of predicting too a little bit into the future of, okay, what potentially could be some of the issues that, you know, we could be seeing that we need to come up with a solution. Um, so at that time, it's first understanding, okay, what is needed now, and then also prioritizing then at that point, okay, so where do we ahead. focus exactly? Yeah. Yeah. You, you're not solving last year's problem. You're solving no, the problem in like eight five, year, five, eight, eight years, years. Yeah, yeah, exactly yeah. down the road. So, so like yeah. Fortune teller you are. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Look yeah. into my crystal ball. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> So, yeah, so that's okay. So there's three new hybrids. Yes. One of them is Invigor L33OPC, uh, right? Yes. Zero PC. That's right. Now, so how long has that one been, been you've been working on that? Yeah, so that one, um, probably at least that five to seven years. Yeah, that like gets incredible. Yeah. I, I think people just don't, like, it's not like a, it's just, it's, it's a long tail. Yeah. It's a long tail. Yeah. Okay, so... 
when we're we're thinking about these three new hybrids, and any really any hybrid that you've been a part of commercializing, what, what attributes make a good canola hybrid from your perspective? Yeah. So I think that full package. So obviously yield, yield stability are two of the main things that we're focused on. But again, it's that disease resistance. Um, it's innovative traits. So whether it is like, for example, pod chatter reduction. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's giving that full package to that farmer at the end of the day that it's not just solving one problem it's solving potentially multiple problems for him giving him solutions well on monday night so when this is on the air on sirius it's going to be a, a week ago we were in edmonton at the edmonton river hawks game we were and we were t- kind of talking about this 10 years of pod shatter reduction technology which is i can't believe it's already been 10 10 years i actually met yeah, I, I was in Ghent, yeah. um, and I'm, I, I'm, and I, the gentleman's name, and I cannot remember it off the top of my head. Yes. But I met <laughs> the guy that came up with that trait. Yes, I think about the value that he has created for Canadian agriculture, exactly. and, uh, and and in the Northern Plains. So it's it's reaches ten years. But when looking at innovation like that, do, do you realize how significant it will be to farmers when it's being developed? Like, do you think about that? Like when you're developing. You're, you know, these these v- new hybrids are coming to the market. It's like, okay, like it, it's pretty cool for you. It's it's uh, you know breeders are very very proud of their hybrids and their varieties. But do you ever think about how far that value extends? So I think in the beginning, like you said, you talk about the excitement or the passion that we have when we're starting out um, working on these different traits, and I think at the time. We hope that everything that we see or um, we're getting information on, um, that it will come to fruition. But I think a lot of times we underestimate actually the true potential of those traits themselves um, until we actually see them in the field or in the hybrid in the field and we see the results that we're getting from it. So when you think about the L233P that's been um, growing on more than 20 million acres at this point in time. Incredible. It's crazy. And so, like, we can be pretty passionate people about, like, what we're creating and what we're talking about and what we're trying to do and the solutions that we're trying to create. Um, But... In the end, yeah, until we actually see the full picture and the benefits that it has brought our customers, do we actually realize um, yeah. Yeah, what, what we've actually created and the, brought out? They're, they're like, your, like the, your creations. Yeah. It, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah. I, yeah. I, I always like talking to plant breeders because yes. you, you're the beginning. <laughs> you know, the, everything starts with the seed. That's right. And you're, you're the beginning of that, yep. of that process. Exactly. So, um, so at, at the Canola Research Facility, what, yes. what are some of the current areas of focus for BSF, uh, you and your team? Yeah, so at this point, so again, it's, it's a complex program. We're working on many different areas. Um, obviously, we're focused on that full, complete package. So again, yield, yield stability, disease resistance. Um, but at the same time, though, we're also looking at increased disease resistance. So as different diseases um, start to become more of an issue or problem in different areas, um, you know, we're trying to focus on those again, trying to use that crystal ball to kind of predict which ones are going right. to be issues um, or, you know, potential issues down the road. At the same time, though, um, we're also just trying to provide, you know, possible solutions to those abiotic and biotic stresses um, that are out there um, that can limit the genetic potential of the material that we have. So, um we yeah, like there's so many different things that we're that we're working on in the end. So, you know, it, you're th- talking about like diseases match to. There's not only how the disease develops in its, it, maybe its prevalence, but also the areas where it happens. So I think of like club root, mm, yes. right? Originally it was like, oh, we only need to worry about club root for hybrids that we're going to be selling at Edmonton. That's right. Eh, wrong. 
that's a bigger it, it's over a bigger geography now exactly yeah right? yeah so i guess that's one of the things that we really tried to incorporate into our breeding program is just the diversity so just making sure that we're creating a hybrid that can be grown across multiple different regions so whether that's across that western canada or into the u.s as well um, we're just trying to focus um, so that we have something that's available for everyone, whether or not you have it or you eventually will have it. Yeah. But at least we have something there that's a potential solution for them. So are, are there certain things that you do at BSF to hold yourselves accountable or make sure that you know, you're maintaining that commitment to developing new innovations for farmers? Or just talk about that a little bit to make sure it's like on the forefront like it's it's on the windshield so to speak that's right yeah so it's that constant communication so whether it's with our marketing group or sales group um, just even like participation within the industry as well so it's staying on top or on the edge of things just make always making sure that we're on that forefront because obviously um, with our market share and where we sit here in um, the area right now obviously one little mess up or slip up can lose we can lose that so it's making sure we have our hand or we have our fingertip on the um you know what what is the main thing that's out there so yeah. that we're just focused on that and just that continuous con communication i think is the most important thing with the customer and what they need okay so we got we got three we got three new hybrids yes w why are you excited about them so I think for one thing, um, the earliness of them. So definitely some of the comments that were coming back from the customers was that, you know, you know, just because we have such a short growing season, it would be nice to have something that's a little bit earlier. And with a couple of them, yeah, they're primarily focused in that Alberta, um, Saskatchewan region or, um, or Manitoba region as well. Um, also, one of them is suited for the states as well. But again, yep. it's that earliness, I think. That, so farmers you know, in North Dakota be paying attention here that's right yeah. yeah definitely there's one variety there that would be good for you for that area so. which one's that one that's the 333 pc okay so that's l33 pc that yeah. one's a good fit for for north dakota growers okay that's right yeah and saskatchewan that's right yeah and i think the the 330 and the 333 also were suited for that manitoba and saskatchewan so again yep. obviously as you get into those longer growing seasons or shorter growing seasons you know it's it's good to have that one that's a little bit shorter just because again we have 110 growing degrees days that we're working with so yeah yeah well we, we got we got lots of canola grower listeners on uh, both sides of the border That's here right. on real ag radio so katrina this has been fantastic thank you yes. so much and you know what i thought of as we we're having this conversation we are right in the vicinity where foul <laughs> balls are being hit yes so one just landed just not too far from us oh, i didn't want to didn't want to scare you perfect but uh i heard the crack of the bat and i heard everybody look i saw everybody looking i was like um yeah we, we can, katrina we got to keep our head up over yeah here. enjoy the rest of the baseball game perfect thank oh. you so much well it's it's great to have you it's katrina <laughs> Roberts. She is a plant breeder with BSF. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We've got more coming up here with the 2024 Invigor Series broadcasting on this Saturday night from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. FP Genetics relentlessly brings innovative new seed genetics to Canadian farms, ensuring growers, breeders, and farmers are supported and viable. Being a valued partner on your farm for decades, you can expect the continuous pursuit of the best genetics. Visit fpgenetics.ca to discover FP's hybrid fall rye varieties and their end uses, or contact your local FP seed dealer or territory manager to discuss your fall seed strategy specific to your region. If you're involved in the agriculture industry, it's important to stay informed on all the latest issues affecting your business. At realagriculture.com, we offer fast, reliable news, information, and insights to help you keep on top of all of the latest in Canadian agriculture. Visit realagriculture.com and sign up for our free daily newsletter covering everything from news, agronomy, animal agriculture, and much more. Visit realagriculture.com forward slash subscribe today. Since 2010, the Wheat School on realagriculture.com has been helping farmers to grow great wheat. Covering everything from markets, the latest research, pest and disease control, all the way down to on-farm trials, the Wheat School has everything your crop needs. 
Check out our massive video library on YouTube and grow great wheat with The Wheat School. Brought to you by Syngenta Canada, CNM Seeds, and Alberta Grains. Welcome back to Real Ag Radio in the final game of the 2024 Invigor Series presented by Invigor Hybrid Canola from BSF Canada Agricultural Solutions. Swing for the fences and harvest your full potential with Invigor's high-yielding hybrids, club root resistant genetics, and industry-leading patented pod shatter reduction technology, 10-year anniversary. This year, BSF is happy to be celebrating Canadian farm families and retailers who have championed pod shatter reduction technology, like I said, for 10 years. Time flies. I, yeah, I remember that trade first came out. Un- unbelievable. It's 10 years already. Uh, joining us right now is Glenn Forster. He is Regional Sales Manager with BSF Canada. Well, Glenn, great to see you. Great to see you, too. How, uh, how are things going? Things are going great. It was a uh, great year for Invigor. We had uh, a strong strong performance this year with our, uh, with our hybrids, and uh, all in all, crop conditions are good. Um, the, you know, I think customers are happy. We've finally yep. got some uh, out of the drought years, and uh, I think there's some good yield potential that's out there this year. Well, that's good. I was, I was wondering about how you're enjoying the baseball game. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> baseball game is baseball games great. We've had uh, some great customers out tonight, and uh, it's really nice to see. It's nice to see the families uh, as much as anything. There that's is a, a lot of families. That, the biggest thing that I like about these types of events is the families get to come out and get to enjoy it. Whereas, you know, when some other events that we have where it's just the, the producers, it's it's more when you can invite the families. So, You know, that's a really good point. A lot of times when you say like a hockey game, you know, tickets now have got so crazy. It's hard to have a big night with families. You can't. Uh, so this is, you know, this, this is a, the, w, the WCBL does a great job catering to families. Um, teams across Alberta and, and Saskatchewan. So it, I think you're right. I think it's great to see it. It's a great atmosphere, too, here. It's a pretty good baseball game, and it's like standing room only, so it's awesome. Yeah. Yeah, no, the standing room only is a, a very, very good description. So um, regional sales manager, what what does that actually mean? What are you doing? <laughs> I manage people that do a lot of the work for us, so, uh, but no, uh, re- realistically, I help uh, help our uh, sales staff, you know, support them uh, in in making sure that the customers get the products that they need at the right time, that sort of thing. So, okay, cool. Uh, and you've been with BSF for quite a while. It's uh, twenty years. So, because um, I can remember interviewing you at a crop production show on maybe like a fungicide launch. Yeah, uh, yeah, I've been a few different uh, uh, areas. Uh, I yeah. come from the tech side, and uh, just recently into the sales. Uh, manager role. So. Okay, so uh, doing some sales management, uh, how did it go at uh, Egg in Motion for you? Oh, Egg in Motion was uh, really good. Like We have a nice uh, facility there. Great to see all the customers come out and, yep. and um, you know, we, ha- we have our plots there that, you know, show case the Invigor Earlys that we have, um, uh, as well as all of our new in- innovation that we have there. And I think um, just getting to see and having the customers and, and it's nice to have we have a bit of a, a appreciation booth there with some uh, food and some beverages and it's always yep. a, a good time so do, do you use that site other times of the year for tours we do use the site other times for tours but we also have a lot of uh, what we call our invigor dsts uh, across the west that are our yes, large-scale right. grower uh, trials that that's where we do a lot of uh, of tours as well you know the egg emotion sites kind of is is best for that one time or that one day maybe a week or so after that um but throughout the season we have the regional tours uh, at all of those dsts across western canada okay so like the this you know l330 pc and the l333 pc like those new those you know two of the new hybrids would they be in those dsts yeah so all of our new uh invigor early hybrids are in the dsts so in saskatchewan okay. we have the Invigor L333 PC and as well as the L330 PC uh, in every single one of our hybrids. Uh, and then also in, you know, in, in some of the locations as well as particularly in uh, Alberta, we have L341 PC, which is a new oh. second generation club root uh, hybrid. So, You know, you were mentioning earlier about all the families that came here today and the, you know, the WCBL as well as in some you know, communities across the country, and I think, or sorry, across Saskatchewan and Alberta. And I think what's kind of cool is it kind of, baseball has that kind of weird way of sort of bringing it all together um, for for a lot of communities to get together and to, to bond and talk. And I know that's something uh, you were, we met with on last Monday, some 4-H uh, members. Yeah. You know, that's a big part of communities as well. It's a big thing for BSF. 
Yeah, for sure. We, you know, I think one of the things that we try to do is we try to support uh, communities as much as possible, whether it's through donations. You know, our, our reps are are part of the uh, communities. They're part of the uh, uh, the places that they work. And, you know, I think through our sponsorships that we have, one of the um, one of the new things that we've had over the last couple of years is the Growing Home campaign. That's, yeah, what uh, is that about? So it's, you know, it's a campaign. It's uh, where people can uh, nominate, you know, communities to be able to um, support, you know, whether it's a curling rink or a, uh, a daycare facility or, or something that's in a rural uh, area. So I think this year, uh, Abbey Curling Rink was the winner for Saskatchewan. Really? And they get a $25,000 donation uh, direct to their, uh, to that facility to help support those local communities. So we, we hold those on an annual basis. You know, that's one of our larger uh, community donations, but we'd have a lot of, uh, uh, of many, you know, additional ones that are more regional and smaller in, in nature as well. Okay, so for a lot of the audience that's maybe not super familiar with yep. Saskatchewan geography, geography, Abbey is southwest southwest Sask- Saskatchewan. Yeah. So, yep. Also, a Durham variety was named after. There's a, I think there was an Abbey Durham variety. There's lots of lots of Durham and lentil varieties are cr- from uh, uh, places throughout Saskatchewan. If you think about it. So. Yeah, 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 absolutely. Now, um, also seed donations. Yep. Yeah, what, what's going on there? So a lot of times, you know, our reps are are uh, have have seed donations to provide to um, you know local charities that are uh, across Western Canada. We have a few examples that we have is uh, some seed donations have gone to the Nokomis uh, Community Center uh, that uh, was there to help support you know like the local community center and and yep. and, and have raises there. Um, working closely with our our growers that uh, you know put in the the um, the um, the local um, seed varieties and then they grow it out and then you know the profits go to uh, the local communities. Other examples is we've worked with uh, uh, for the Drake Sportsplex, Melford Mustang organization, and then multiple Harvest for Kids, uh, which are multiple locations across the province where you know want to work with the growers that are out and in yeah. their communities. Putting in these crops, we help provide them with Invigor uh, canola seed, as well as uh, uh, herbicide and fungicide for those uh, those oh, acres. Yeah. And you know, ultimately, it's about profit and and the charities that uh, that they that benefit from it. And 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 you've like the other part of it too is. Um, like you've not only got customers in those local communities. You also got reps in those local communities. Yeah, and that that's a hundred percent. The best reps are always the ones that are right in the local communities. They know they're the curling business. on Tuesday yeah. night. They're playing men's yeah. league hockey. Yeah, and they're using the sports plexes that we're that we're working with. They're helping. Yeah. A lot of them are even helping harvest uh, the grain for those harvest for kids as well. So you know, I think it's it's important for us to you know stay within the community and you know a couple ball since we're at a ball game couple ball examples that we have is i know that um you know the edam baseball buildings the minor ball uh, that we've had where you know a lot of growers work with that uh, community and, and in that organization and help support them not just in with Invigor, but with also funds and i think we had a five thousand dollar donation towards that one uh, oh, wow, as awesome. well so that's great stuff uh, yeah well, Glenn, I'll let you get back to the baseball game. There's a lot going on here. The uh, the local uh, Saskatoon Berries are trying to come back on the Okotoks dogs, and uh, a lot of your customers are here to cheer them on, and you, you want to get back to those customers. So thanks a lot for joining us here today. Appreciate it. Thanks a lot. Really appreciate it. Okay, when we come back, we've got more coming up here on the 2024 Invigor Series from Saskatoon, Saskatchewan. We've got a farmer panel next, and we'll get to that when we come back. You're listening to Real Life Radio, brought to you today by BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Real Ag Radio is Canada's only daily radio show focused on agriculture. Get expert advice on Agronomic Monday. Tuesdays and Wednesdays will cover a broad range of issues. Thursday, we'll hear from farmers across the country on the Farmer Rabbit Fire. And we'll wrap things up Fridays with the Real Ag Issues panel with Kelvin Hepner and Lindsay Smith. Join us Monday through Friday at 4.30 Eastern. And don't forget about the replay at 7 in the morning on Rural Radio 147, Sirius XM. I'm Lindsay Smith from realagriculture.com. 
Join me Monday nights for The Agronomist, a one-hour live and interactive show broadcast across YouTube, Facebook, and X. Monday nights at 8 p.m. Eastern, I host expert agronomists from all over the country to give you answers to some of the toughest agronomic questions. Join us live or catch the replay Tuesday morning. That's The Agronomist with me, Lindsay Smith, Monday nights live at 8 p.m. Eastern. And welcome back to Real Ag Radio. We are here in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and we're doing the Invigor series. This is a really good game. Things are not looking good for the home club, though, here right now, but uh, they're going to come back. There's still a lot of time. Baseball's never over till it's over, said Yogi Bear. Okay, or oh, Yogi Bear, I should say, not Yogi <laughs> Bear. Oh, boy. Anyway, let's get to our farmer panel. Up first, we have Matt Enns. Hey, Matt, how's it going? Good. Good. And long-time listener of this program. Sure. No, I got uh, Sirius Radio on in my truck most days, and afternoon rolls along, and Real Ag Radio. It's good. Nice stuff. Well, I appreciate you listening. Yeah. How, um, now, uh, how are the crops in roster? I'd say the crops look good. So we, we had probably like a lot of the province, lots of moisture early, so everything started off better than it had for a few years now. And uh, they seem to be holding on pretty good. We, we usually have dirt that can hold on, you know, in drier conditions fairly well. And, uh, yeah, you, you don't see any stress on them now. I know with really hot weather we've had in the last few weeks, you, the, maybe the top end has been nipped off a little yeah. bit. But, uh, yeah, everything still looks really good. Okay, so I, that, that's how I've been kind of describing. I know, I know for some people, like down in the Assiniboy area, I've heard from a few of our listeners they they feel they're going backwards fast, um, but I think for a majority of the broad brush here, I get in trouble when I do this, but w- I think that's how I would describe it. We're we're still good, but we've knocked that top end off. That yeah. that really above average crop that we thought we maybe had like a month ago, that that one's kind of it's not here now. It's it seems like that's got to be the case. I mean, it's yeah. been really really warm. Could surprise us, like yeah. hey. These yeah. hybrids hold up nowadays. Sure. Also joining us is Josh Lott. Is that how I say that, Josh? Yeah, that's good enough. How, okay, how would you say it? <laughs> well, I'd say Josh Laid. La- Laid? Laid. Laid. Okay, perfect. Josh Laid. We're going with that. <laughs> and you farm north of Saskatoon. Uh, it, kind of the same area, right? Yep, right around Matt. Yep. How, how good of a farmer is Matt? Very good. Okay. We're all actually, to be honest, we're all trying to chase him down. <laughs> that would be my dad. Yeah, but <laughs> you're, uh, you're chip off the old block there. Yeah. <laughs> so, Josh, tell us about your farm. Uh, so, actually, I farm with a um, I'm a part of a joint venture. So, I'm a father-son duo, uh, cool. John, John and Raiden Weeb from uh, just north of uh, Saskatoon at Osler. And yeah. Uh, long story short, I actually grew up in Australia and uh, come over No, here. you could, couldn't tell. <laughs> <laughs> you're good. You're good. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, I joined in with these guys about 10 years ago, and uh, nice. we, we farm, yeah. So what, what brought you to Canada? Um, it would have been, I guess, going through university at uh, University of Adelaide, north of, uh, well, at uh, Gore there, just north of Adelaide. Um, I remember we had a soil scientist from Winnipeg, actually, and often showing pictures of the Canadian landscape, and I just thought, ah, after schooling, I thought I wouldn't mind going and seeing a bit of the bit of the world and come over here and um, fell in love with the farming and also a lovely Canadian girl. So oh, well, yeah. So I knew there was a girl involved. Yeah, I often. knew there would be a girl yeah. involved. <laughs> but uh, she's not involved in the family farm at all, actually. She's originally yeah. from Edmonton. And oh, cool. We uh, got the opportunity to actually buy in with this, with this family farm. They helped us out, and uh, here we are. Oh, that's cool. That's a very, that's a very awesome story. I yeah, appreciate there's you a lot to it. Do. There's a lot to it, and um, maybe a story for another day. Yeah, awesome stuff. Um, how are your crops looking? Just like Matt said, Eric, they look great. Um, I'm pretty optimistic, to be honest. I, d- I don't feel like we're in pretty early. We were able to in this area. We The snow left early and we got out there, and um, I think a lot of our yield potential is set. And if we can score another rain here in the next couple of weeks, I, I'm very optimistic of what's coming in. Well, I will tell you guys, I, I left Lethbridge this afternoon, and I was in shorts and a t-shirt, and it was like a beautiful day, and uh, Saskatoon's a little cooler. Yeah. Like, yeah. We, we got some definite cloud cover. It's trying to rain. Yeah. Hopefully it holds off till we're done here. <laughs> but I'll uh, take it. Start right now. It's yeah. all good. But this, for this, I, I think this is pretty good weather right now, right? Like, we're, we're cheering for this more than we are 40. For sure. For sure. It was a nice respite, like... Last couple of days were actually cool. Yeah, you know, you get your bunny hug on, 
Yeah, that's hoodie. a hoodie for all of you outside of this <laughs> province. <laughs> they talk strange here. <laughs> um, but so, yeah, could continue. Go ahead. No, no, I, I, it's awesome. A uh, little cool weather here. It really helps the cops recover, I think, a little bit. Yep, yep. for sure. Yeah. Um, would you, s- is it, uh, like, which crop do you think looks the best? Would, or you, you're the most excited about? Um... You think it has the most potential? Man, the wheat looks awesome. And yeah, lentils. Cereals. Lentils. And, Look, and lentils, lentils. Yeah, lentils generally in our area, they're very much south, as you'd know. Yeah. And um, we, we went hard lentils this year, and they look pretty good. So Are they greens or reds? Reds. Reds. Yeah, just yeah. reds. But yeah. they, yeah, I don't know. To be honest, everything looks pretty good. But if I, was to, if I was to judge it, I reckon our wheat, then lentils and canola. Okay. How are you, Matt? Yeah, uh... I think the wheat looks really good. Um, some of our early canola looks very, very good as well. We actually seeded uh, all of our Invigor specialty canola in the first, fall. right off the bat. Same luck as in the fall. Was that early? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it was super early. Um, so that's the 358. Yeah. And I think that got through to a little bit more maturity before it got hot. And so that looks heavy and winter, winter. Yeah. I was I was talking about people like you on Thursday's show. Oh, okay. last uh, yeah, Thursday's show. Uh, those if you didn't get if you were in super early, didn't get any sort of frost to knock it back. You got you grew, grew through that flea beetle stage, mm-hmm. and you missed the big heat because we had like three weeks of huge heat here. Yeah, yeah. winter. I think so. Yeah. I mean, we we'll, we have some that was seeded, you know. At the end as well, so we'll be we'll have a nice comparison, and that's always interesting to see. Like, how does that come out in the wash at the end of the year? The stuff seeding on April twenty sixth versus you know your last few fields, but yeah, yeah, I think that early is good this year. Yeah, that early stuff of yours does look good. We we drive past it every week. Well, of course, you did right on the highway. <laughs> that, 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 hanging but, out, thinking, "Geez, you guys, you've hit a home run here." Yeah, but but Josh, <laughs> he, risky for him to do it along the highway, <laughs> right? But it's, I love it though. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Just ballsy. <laughs> we do like we it. do have some large cereal all, along the highway in one spot too, so it's not all perfect. So you are human, <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. You, you are sure. human. I like yeah. that. that. That's yeah. that's good. So o- overall, is there any um, like we always learn lots from each growing season? Every growing season is different, and we we see you know unfortunately we have to look at some of our mistakes or some of the things that you know. We we have visuals to look at where we're like, man, I should have made a different decision. Any of those come up to come to mind based on this year at all, or is, it's um, not too bad? For us, would be seed our canola in the snow like Matt. <laughs> okay, you should have gone with what Matt did. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know how many guys seed canola first because just logistics on the end. Like I would say they side, don't. It's yeah. uncommon. It's but rare. We started doing that, I think, because we had two seeders um, for a long time, uh, and one would be almost like canola all through the spring, yep. and the other would do, you know, pulses, cereals, whatever. And so we'd get that one out early in, in canola. But I'd say when, in answer to your question about what I'm seeing that taught us another lesson, I guess, is that we have a, a barley variety trial. And uh, we always run a barley variety trial because we have a small malt plant in Roster in there as well. And uh, we, seeded, we seed Copeland as our check typically. And the Copeland is very lodged. Uh, okay. So it's it's not a – it's like a, I'm preaching to myself about adapting new varieties and the new genetics that we see. The three other varieties beside it are all standing nicely, and, and that one really isn't. Mm. And so it's just a nice – it's actually a nice visual for me to take to other people, but I, st- I don't like to walk by it every day either. But I think the one thing for me, Sean, would be uh, we seeded our – L358, and then our 340, and then finished off with our 234. Well, guess what? All come flowering at the exact same time. They oh, all yeah. did. So oh. I think just, I, I probably, we went into the season thinking, well, we want, we've got to get that L358 in quick because it's longer season. But yep. when it come to fungicide timing, it was already in one day. So there is definitely just something to remember for next year is to perhaps uh, switch, them, switch those hybrids around a little bit and just get a bit more space throughout the see that that's a good learning lesson yeah be in it, it, it but you know every year's different so it'll be interesting to see how you yeah. switch it around and how that impacts next year and what that looks that's like it's a good so. point like my business partner and i we often well his, his favorite quote is there's no two years of the same yeah you know we've been talking about some marketing stuff too and he's like oh, i gotta sell everything off the combine like 
Braden, no two years are the same. That's what you told <laughs> yeah. me. So. Yeah, la- la- last year, how, there's a last year's plan is not this year's. Like it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or you uh, don't make this year's plan based on last year's mistake. Yeah. That kind of stuff. But uh, yeah, it's it's good things to to definitely keep in mind. Fungicide across all the acres this year or not needed? Yes, awesome. we did everything, and uh, we just did the first half of our canola. And then backed off on the last half. So we'll see okay. if that's going to be a good learning experience or not. Yeah, well, yeah. well, that'll be interesting for sure. Yeah. yeah. It's interesting showing up on um, satellite imagery. You can sort of see where we didn't spray. Oh, yeah. But I can't see any disease yet, but we'll okay. see what happens. Are you both using satellite imagery kind yeah. of technology? You are? Yeah. Yeah, so how do you use it? Honestly, well, we use, uh, am I allowed to say, well, it's field view. Yeah, okay, so that's So that's what we use. And um, honestly, I, I, I like to use it. When I'm having coffee in the morning, it's it sends you. <laughs> yeah. It, it, depending on cloud cover and smoke cover, but every three or four days you get this image, and to me it's just like a quick checklist of the fields. You can rip through it. Yep. And it's insane how how quick that stuff shows up. You wouldn't think, but I can see these check strips showing up. Interesting. I can see flea beetle damage in the spring, but yeah, it's just a it's yeah. like a quick little uh, quick little read in a sense. But you using that stuff, Matt, or not? Not a lot. Yeah. Um, Josh is always on the leading edge on that stuff, but uh, we 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 had a former partner who would use use it a lot, and so that was I think beneficial to our group. Um, I, and I think the skill sets that we have today, they're not really as strong in that kind of that makes sense. area. Yep. So my dad would he does a lot of the agronomy, and and does a great job with agronomy, but uh, he's he's a little bit older and he's not quite as up to, say, looking at satellite imagery quite as often as some of the guys like Josh is. And myself, I, I, I don't do it. I should. I should do it. You could. Josh will teach me how. This it's guy is also running a farm, runs a malt plant, and building a house. Well, so I don't know when he has time. The building, and they've got three young I kids. I think the most stressful thing is building the house. It's, it's, so it's give yourself there. a break. It's up there. <laughs> you know what? You know what people say after they build a house. Are you general contracting it? Yeah. Oh, basically. See, okay. When people general contract their own house, I did. Yeah. And I'm not the most handiest of person, but I, I've heard this from other people that are handy. What you always say is, "I'm never doing that again." <laughs> oh, I believe it. Uh, we're about two thirds through, I think, and yeah, we're about in that part of the whole process. <laughs> well, okay, sure. we're gonna take a quick break. We've got Marcon up here with uh, Josh Lade and Matt Ends, and we are at the Invigor Series in Saskatoon, Saskatchewan, and uh, we've got the Okotoks Dogs versus the local Saskatoon Berries. Some great WCBL action here on a Saturday night. We'll be back right after this. Advanced Canola Trait Technology is here. And it's soon to be the talk of the town. Optimum Gly delivers excellent yield potential and agronomic trait performance. Improved crop safety. Enhanced weed control. And a wider window of application. You're going to want to see this. Learn more at OptimumGly.ca. Canola is more than just a pretty face in the prairie landscape. It's a big business, both here and around the world, that requires you to be informed and up-to-date on everything it takes to grow a successful crop. The Canola School on realagriculture.com has an expert library of video resources covering markets, agronomy, and more to help you grow a healthy and profitable canola crop. Visit canolaschool.com today. Brought to you by BASF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola. Tonight we're celebrating 10 years and more than 80 million acres of farmers planting at Vigor Hybrid Canola with pod shatter reduc- reduction technology. BSF is excited to introduce three new hybrids, as we heard about earlier, for the 2025 growing season. Reach out to your BSF Canada Egg Solutions rep to learn more. Uh, I also encourage you to talk to your local retailer. Okay, we got a great farmer panel here. we got Josh Laid and Matt Enns, both out of Saskatchewan. Uh, curious, do you guys use pod shatter? Yeah, I would say pod shatter and club root resistant traits are like almost like table stakes for us. By Have now. to now. Yep. Have to. Yep. Do, so uh, with the pod shatter, do you swath it or do you straight cut it? We straight cut a lot of it. Um, I would say as much as we can. Much as you can. Yeah. Okay. Yep. 
Uh, Josh, how about you? Yeah, 100%. Pochetto, club root, you name it. We get the full bag and uh, straight cut. The full bag. I like that. That's a, that's a, that's a nice little saying. We get the full bag. We, <laughs> we, we all, all, of the, uh, all of the options. All of it. Yeah, it's Just like, like your boy, John Deere come once. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, right, yeah, I want her fully loaded. Yeah, you want the freezer beside the seat, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, are you straight cutting? Yes. You are? We actually are straight cutting to the point that we actually don't have any swathers anymore. So you we you did sell the swather. in. You sold the swather. Yes. So maybe wow. we'll be chatting next year and we'll be buying swathers. I'm not sure. <laughs> oh, I, I mean, not. it just it works so good now. Like, oh, we, we tried it like a decade ago, right, when that was... I don't even know if Pod Shatter was in the mix or what. They had Pod Sealant, if you remember that. I remember that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Uh, we tried straight cutting some canola back then, and it was a nightmare. And just difficult to kind of make it feed, that type of thing. And now, like, provided there's not something really odd going on, straight cutting is easier than picking up. It's just fantastic. Okay, so... Matt, I gotta ask you. You got this bag beside you. Yeah, I got a bag. And uh, what, what exactly do we have here? Well, I brought that for you, Sean. Um, so we went on a recent trade mission to China with uh, Sask Barley and the Canadian Malting Barley Technical Center. Yeah. And uh, we did a conference trying to make sure our biggest customer for barley and lots of other egg exports is, is happy with us. But one of the uh, maltsters that we toured gave us these. Sunflower seeds. So I thought we're going to a ball game. I should I should bring the Chinese sunflower seeds. And they're, you want to try them? They're sure, super awesome. Yeah, yeah. I don't know if you could try so them these are, we're, during we're, the interview. We but. are trying Chinese sunflower seeds. They look. Josh, you got to give her a go. I still can't figure out how to do this. Look, do they're you quite. Your... They're quite long. They're huge. Yeah. No, for sure. Just like you can hear the like, crack, everybody. Yeah. There you go. Oh yeah, there is a little bit of flavor to them. They're good. I have a couple couple friends like them, a couple friends not, but I yeah, like yeah, yeah. I love them. They're they're it's a different what kind of seasoning? It's like a sweet. I know it's like like a biscuity mm. cookie yeah, yeah. cookie thing, right? Matt, could you uh, raid that to us, please? <laughs> <laughs> well, my Mandarin's uh, not very good. I shishi. That's yeah, the, that's yeah. what I remember. That's thank you. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they have like a you're right, like a, a cookie. Yeah, there's a cookie finish to them. Yeah. That is interesting. Yeah. Anyways. Okay, we'll have more of those. Yeah. <laughs> that, that is very, very cool. How did you enjoy that trip? Trip was awesome. Um, we were gone for about a week, pretty much day uh, and a half a, or two days of that, traveling on either end. So. That's a quick. Yeah, it was busy. Um, but we had, I think, 100 different um, barley buyers, malt buyers in, in for a conference day where we yeah. talked about the barley uh supply chain in Canada to China and, and kind of got a chance to, I, my personal role was to talk about production in Saskatchewan and how we grow barley out here. Yeah. So that was fun. Kind of cool to talk to end users. Yeah. Yeah. And then we got to uh, see a bunch of, you know, we got to see a big brewery, a big malt house and just strengthen some relationships out there. Well, you guys have really stepped up here to do this. Josh, next, you're going to be like this guy and dress up like a <laughs> strawberry. <laughs> I want to see you in that race. There's, there's a, I'll give it a go. There's a slow progression that happens here. <laughs> yeah. You start with the radio show, and then you end up going on the field dressed as a banana or a strawberry. Hmm. They're he's really going. Oh, and the blueberry. Yeah. You've got a blueberry, too. I think he's the favorite. Yeah, he, he would be. Well, he would, yeah, he would be the berry, I guess. Yeah. Well, the banana looks more aerodynamic. Well, actually, look at the footwear. I'm taking. Uh, i got to go strawberry now. Yeah, yeah the banana true. wore Birkenstocks. That wasn't smart. <laughs> But the but the banana does have the aerodynamics. That's a good. Uh, <laughs> that is a good point. Yeah, I think you got to go with the foot. It's, it's same as F one racing. You got to pay att- the tires matter. Yeah, you got to pay attention to the tires yeah. and uh, the the strawberries uh, packing the best uh, footwear for for sure. So you guys have been to a berries game before? I've been to one other berries game. Um, I went with Garrett. Uh, from Nine Mile Legacy, who actually brewed this beer in front of us too. So you got a Saskatoon Berry beer there, yeah, yeah. that's very cool. So he he uh, he said that that beer has kind of been a huge seller for them all summer, and he said the game was games were great. So I came out with him, and then got to come with the whole family this time around, and yeah, it's 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 quite a good event. It's yeah, good. pretty cool. Yeah, Josh, have first game. Yeah, first game too, Sean. Yep, brought the family along, and uh, I'm used to watching cricket, so. Uh, <laughs> So this must the, be very exciting. Yeah, yeah. 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 But exactly. shorter. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Like, I'm pretty sure we're not going to be here for five days, are we? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, I'm going to be in Winnipeg on Monday. Okay. okay. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So, but there's similar baseball and cricket. Like, yeah. there's a bat. 
There's a bat. The bat's flat in cricket. Yeah. Um, you kind of bowl from both ends. Right. I guess the really the only thing that looks the same is the throwing. Like is in throwing from the outlaw, out, outfield. Sorry. And, and the pitcher's the bowler. Yes. See? But it's look at this. It's like this. It's round arm. Like a windmill. You can't throw yeah, you, it. Yeah. Oh, you just windmill it. Yeah. And you just let go of it. Yeah, but you come steaming in. The fast guys come steaming in off a 20 or 30 meter run up. Yeah. They come in, they can bounce the ball at the pitch and bounce it up at your head. They can aim at you. They can hit you. They can do whatever they want. Very cool. Yeah. And, and uh, is this true that the definition of a test match is you people teams would play England to test themselves versus England? Is that true or nah, not? Nah, oh, if you're going to test yourself in cricket, you'd play the Aussies for sure. Well, now, now yeah. that's what it's called now. Yeah. yeah we're never going no, to it is it's, it's, it's the old <laughs> foe. It definitely started off over in England. So, okay. Yeah. Very that's cool. The, Probably one of the biggest, I don't know whether it still is today, but the biggest cricket rivalry would be between England and Australia. Yeah, I wasn't going to bring this up, but uh, I was watching the Olympics earlier today. Mm -hmm. And rugby sevens, Australia lost in the bronze. Oh, really? They did. Yeah, I'm sorry. (laughs) See you, guys. (laughs) (laughs) It was, it was, it was rugby. I'm, I'm sticking with baseball. Rugby is do you, do you play rugby? No, nah, AFL, Australian rules footy. It's uh, different. Oh, that, yeah, it, it's even crazier. Yeah. Yes, you're right. Yeah, yeah. It's more on the south side. See, all yeah. the rugby's up in the uh, here, north. You know what I want to do is get run over by a truck. That's what, that's what, that's what Australian rules football is. <laughs> Pretty much. <Yeah. laughs> so, uh, harvest plans in shape? Yeah, I think so. Um, yeah, everything's rolling in. Where you should be ready to rock as soon as, uh, as, soon as the crop's ready. Okay, yeah. so do you work on the machinery throughout the winter, Matt, then? We do a little bit, for sure. Um, we have uh, relatively newer equipment, so like our uh, workload isn't massive. Not as bad. Okay. And But we have a couple guys that are on full-time, uh, and so, yeah, in the winter, that's certainly what they'll keep busy with, just maintenance, yeah. getting things ready. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. How about you, Josh? Yeah, we have a nice shop that we bring our machines in in the wintertime. Do and, you? Yeah, so we're very fortunate to have that. And oh, you, we, could see, you could see it from here, pretty much. <laughs> oh, you've got one of those super shops. Oh, yeah. We have a series on real agriculture called Real Ag Shops. Oh, right. We have to, we have to pay a visit to you Josh's. Should. It's brand new. Yeah, it's nice. We we like that stuff. You know, our combines, they're still, I don't know, 2019s, but we like yep. to say we like to pimp them out. We get uh, uh, you whatever. You this fully loaded thing. Yeah, 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 yeah <laughs> exactly. Bag. I don't know if it <laughs> makes sense, but we enjoy doing it. It keeps us busy and keeps our full-time guys busy. And are, are you good with a wrench? Oh, Okay. I'd say I'm okay. You're definitely better than me. What do you mean? <laughs> well, I'd be the the worst on our farm. Better, I, I know better that, than I used to be. So I know this feeling. <laughs> really? I, uh, the most unmechanically inclined farm kid known to man. Oh, yeah. Like, I, I'm terrible. Well, like, I'm just you, brutal. Well, you're good with electronics. From Thank what I've you. seen here. That's what I always said. I can, I, can hook, hey, I can hook your computer up to the Wi-Fi. Fifty percent of our problems are uh, uh, electrical at this point now. But I mean, you typically you lean a laptop from the dealer. Yeah, so. yeah. You guys are really boosting my self confidence. Yeah, I can, really get do. right back in, <laughs> right back in there. <laughs> I, I I do appreciate it. Okay, we'll wrap up with the markets. That that's a good way to end. Sure. Um, Let Matt talk on that one. Is the pro there? Are you Matt? Well, you like to I'm, follow I'm not it? as good at the wrench, right? So I have to be, I have to have a role somewhere, and I do like marketing. Um, yeah. Typically pay quite a bit of attention to that. It's been tough. Yeah. I don't know if there's any, like, perfect answers this year. I mean, the lentil market still stable. That's yep. good. We've got a bit of lentils to go, and that's that's been nice. Uh, do you pre-sell? Like, do you, yeah. do you do some, like, you don't wait till you get it in the bin? No, no, for sure. We, we typically... You know, it obviously depends on the season, whether you're trusting your crop and, yeah, like and what, where the markets yeah. are. Yep. Like, if you think the markets are relatively high, yeah, let's yeah. push it. But we would we would go up to, a, you know, a third easily before seeding. And at this time of year, we would certainly push past that if we had very good marketing opportunities, all, which we haven't. <laughs> all production contracts or do you use options and stuff? Not a, not a lot of options. It's It's not... It's just kind of, you know, selling on futures, typically. Okay, you that do that. Okay, thing. so you're doing that. You're using the futures market. Yeah, just like you're not through just the doing... grain companies. Yeah, okay. Yeah, yep. yeah. They've got a lot of different products. Yeah, very easy to do, use that way. Yeah, for sure. How about you, Josh? Yeah, we we get pretty heavy on forward selling once we see the crop, especially the lentils this year. We pushed pretty hard and sold a few bushels. Um, yeah. Just seeing, it seemed like at setting time that everyone was chucking an extra field of lentils in, and it's pleasing to see that price is maintained. Yeah. And... Um, yeah, so we'll get pretty aggressive on um, 
on forward selling. Which you can. Uh, yeah. And we, we've played around with puts and options and stuff, but I don't know. We need some more learning on that one. I it's like it. Like when you're sitting down and you and I to have a chat about it, that so that makes complete sense. You should sell every <laughs> bushel off the combine yeah. and just put it all on paper. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it's just don't know. It it it. Uh, I, I was a finance grad, and so I took a lot of derivative classes. So, I, but I understand what you mean. Like it, I think it. There's a there is the barrier is. It's intimidating. Yeah, like, well, and there's a, the, 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 okay, like there's the 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 writing of the calls, there's the buying of the call, like going. Okay, I think the market's going down. What do I do? Like, there's a lot of things, and then I think what some brokers do is they really have shot this whole thing in the foot by what they do is they make it way too complicated. Yeah, these like exotic option strategies, <laughs> when all you really need to do was just sell a call. Yeah. Yeah, I think we've done a bit of it in the past and we've probably lost out, but the reality is we've always won on the actual physical contract that we've sold. Yep. We, we might have like sold a bunch of canola sea off the combine and then gone and bought the call because we thought it was going up. Well, yep. it went the other way, so we still won. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know? that, so it's that's, like, that's risk management. Yeah, exactly. So I think we look at it and think, well, you've got to make money out of everything. No, but you can't. Is, you shouldn't. Yeah, I don't know how so, that works. Yeah. Don't, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, what, what I find quite often is that we, we haven't like gone up to the ceiling of our, let's say, uh, our confidence in selling forward selling, right? Yeah. So yeah. if if I have have a if I'm zero percent sold and I'm comfortable getting to thirty percent sold, I still think that's the cheapest way to like get a price in the market, right? Yeah. And so it feels like for the most part we haven't got to that, you know, eighty not, like the last bit where you do need to have options. Yeah. Uh, we usually don't go that far ahead by by harvest time, so it kind of keeps us out of that a little bit, but. Yep. But it could be something to progress towards. Well, and people always got to be careful. You, you, you're hedging. Hedging's different than trading. And totally. some people turn their hedging account into a trading account. And that, when you're long in the field and long on paper, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's where you can get in some trouble. So it, it's, it takes discipline. It's, it's, a, it's a skill. It's, a, it's knowledge. It's no different than trying to grow a crop. It's a whole different skill set that it takes work and reps and practice. So For sure. very cool stuff. Josh, um, really appreciate you joining us here today. It's been great to uh, meet you for the first time. Really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet, Sean. Thanks for having us. That is Josh Laid. Oh, Matt Enns. Thanks a lot, Matt. Really appreciate it. Yeah, it was lots of fun. This is a lot of fun. I'll let you guys get back to your families, watch the baseball game. Sure. Uh, it is still... The, the locals are still down. But still still, struggling. There okay. still is time. There okay. still is time. It's a, it's a close game. Okay, everybody, if you have any feedback on today's show, send me an email, shaney at realagriculture.com. You can also call the Real Ag Feedback Line, 855-776-6147. Big thank you to BSF Canada and Invigor Hybrid Canola for having us here for the Invigor Series. This is our third and final stop on this year's series. Hopefully we get to do it again next year. Thanks, everybody, for getting real and getting connected with Real Ag Radio. And, of course, we'll chat again tomorrow. Cheers, everybody. Get flexible farm financing with an APP cash advance from CCGA. Save on interest costs and sell when the time and price are best for you. Visit ccga.ca to learn more. Cash advances are made under the Government of Canada's Advanced Payments Program.